getting inked is in. And not just with celebrities, athletes and middle class hipsters. Tattoos are trending across the country. This is my dog. Uh, this is me, uh, Jim Morrison, Lizard King. This is a photo of my mother in her 20s. I've got tattoos everywhere. I've got it on my cock and everything. Oh. Even at the last count, back in 2005, roughly one in seven Australian adults had a tattoo, including a quarter of those in their 20s. I got it because I have English and Scottish heritage. I like looking down and seeing something awesome on me. Are you happy with it? Oh yeah, I love it. But how do tattoos stay in your skin? Are they safe? And if you change your mind, how easy are they to remove? Now, there's nothing new about tattoos. This 5,000-year-old European mummy, known as Utsi the Iceman, was found with 50 tattooed lines and crosses. In Utsi's case, charcoal was rubbed into incisions in his skin. But techniques like piercing and puncturing also have long traditions worldwide. These days, electromagnets are used to drive the needles into the skin about six to 12,000 times a minute. How are you feeling, Les? It's fine, it's okay. It's more a scratchy discomfort than it is a pain. So it has moments though, I must admit. It does have moments, but this one's been fine. Longtime tattooist Les Rice grew up in his father's studio. Today, he's trusting colleague Jimmy Memento with a spider design. Roughly how deep are we going in millimetres? Yeah, probably about a millimetre. What we want to do is we want to penetrate the epidermis, which is the surface area of the skin. So that's landing in the dermis layer. The dermis sits between the epidermis, which sheds any inked skin, and the fatty hypodermis, where the ink will run and blur. It offers a target full of tough collagen fibres and elastin. They're woven like fabric, providing strength to our skin and a stable canvas for the ink. The ink remains there despite our immune system's response. Yeah, this is an image. You can see the tattoo outline. And if you look carefully, the individual tattoo granules are probably these tiny little specks here. But white blood cells have collected them and gobbled them up and packaged them. You can't see the wall, but that's a little package sitting in a white blood cell. The white blood cell fills up with ink particles and tries to clear them away. But, it's believed, like a bag full of marbles, it's too stiff to mould its way through the narrow entry points of the lymphatic system. And so they get stuck. But is it safe to have these inks sitting in our skin? The truth is, we don't know. Neither the US, Europe nor Australia has a list of safe tattoo inks that are approved for human use. The production of ink remains largely unregulated, particularly online, and some contain known and possible carcinogens, including heavy metals and polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Well, the industry suggests it's about 5% of their inks, but other researchers have found up to 13 out of 22, so we're not sure exactly. A lot of different compounds are being used, and there is some evidence that they are carcinogenic or could be carcinogenic, but the world is carcinogenic. The smoke that comes out of a diesel is carcinogenic. Oestrogen is carcinogenic. Alcohol is carcinogenic. So the question is not whether it's carcinogenic, but what the risk of this exposure will be to produce cancer. And to my knowledge, there are no published reports of cancer ever resulting from a tattoo. This is a potential risk. We don't know in the tattoo situation what the dose or the duration would be to cause cancer. One study found no evidence that tattoos increase your risk of skin cancer. But experts warn against the common misconception that tattoos can actually prevent such cancers. The perception by patients is that the tattoo is somehow protective. It's like a black shield, but that's a fallacy because the tattoo pigment actually sits lower. It sits below the skin pigment layer, right. uh, which is still vulnerable to ultraviolet damage. 
patients are surprised that there's a skin cancer within the tattoo. And the other issue is a late diagnosis by doctors. Even uh, trained dermatologists will find it a challenge to try to diagnose a changing mole within a black tattoo. The appearance of a tattoo isn't static. A suntan will tint the colour, while sun exposure will fade each colour at varying rates. The ink particles themselves also disperse as cells divide, die or exit the body. How do you know what's going to look good in 20 years? The thing that will make a tattoo last is its really graphic qualities, which is black and lines, okay? Sort of a black linear element will always stand the test of time. When you see too many kind of subtle variations in colour, for instance like a peach colour next to a salmon colour, what may happen is you don't know if the peach colour might turn darker over time, the salmon colour may lighten up. So what once worked can look awful in years to come. So you're saying that you do warn people like, you know, this artwork's not going to look like this when you hit 40. A perfect example is the writing on my arm. Yeah, right. Lots of people come in, they ask for really tiny writing, and I got writing on my arm really tiny, and it was really sharp when it started. And the whole reason why I got it was to sort of explain to people that it doesn't work. And when they're like, well, how old is he? Like, two years. Really? Yeah. Right. So you got that specifically to show people what happens. Yeah, that's half our job. And you have to explain to them the biology of it. Some of them come to Earth and some of them go and get it somewhere else. Okay. And yeah, they can kick themselves in five years, you know? Right. So will the rise of the tattoo be followed by a rise in regret? Sabina Kelly is an international pin-up model and celebrity tattoo judge on TV. She also has her own tattoo removal business in Las Vegas. It has business over there. Oh, it's great, especially with how big like the tattoo TV shows are. You know, everyone's going and getting tattooed, and a lot of them aren't really thinking about it. You know, some of them regretting it and then going, ah, I'm gonna take these off. So yeah, it's right. going good. <laughs> Why would you regret them? No, oh, I don't understand that. It's like a page in your diary. I wouldn't have them taken off. I haven't looked into it, and frankly, I probably won't. Actually, I've been removing my ex-husband's name, this one right here. It was as dark as like this black here. It was, he was black and green and like yellow highlight. Okay. And this has been uh, three times. This would be lightened enough to get something over it. But I want it completely gone, so <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> The industry standard for removal is the Q-switched laser. It directs short pulses of laser light into the ink. One of the first to use them in Australia was Dr. Philip Beckhaw, a leading dermatologist and director of the laser unit at the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne. Now we know that certain colours absorb certain lights. For example, if you're wearing a dark T-shirt and you stand in the sun, you feel warmer than if you're wearing a light T-shirt. So to treat something with a laser, you have to use a colour or wavelength that will be absorbed by the target. So we put in a wavelength that's highly absorbed by this black. In fact, the heat goes in so quickly that the bigger particles explode into just dust. It's believed the white blood cell is then better able to mould its way into the narrow entry points of the lymphatic system and leave the skin. What we see visually is a sudden change to a white colour, which we think is due to the formation of steam within the cells. It's painful at first. Oh, it was way worse than getting it done to start with. It's terrible. And takes a week or two to heal. But to avoid permanent injury, it's critical to heat the ink particles with a laser pulse of the right duration. The heating time has to be short enough to heat the target, but not continue heating such that the surrounding tissue gets burnt. And objects that are smaller than the size of a cell, this time is in the billionth of a second range. And what a Q-switch laser can do is deliver the energy in billionths of a second. That's why dermatologists warn against using intense pulsed light, or IPL, for tattoos. They deliver much longer pulses in the millionth of a second range. It's like a boiling kettle. If I touch a boiling kettle like that, it doesn't even feel hot. But if I leave my finger there for a minute, I'm gonna burn my finger. To remove a professionally inked tattoo requires at least 10 sessions at six to eight week intervals. 
So it can take several years and easily cost 10 times more than the tattoo. Even then, success isn't guaranteed. There can be pigmentation of the skin and some colours have proven easier to remove than others. Black is actually the easiest colour to remove. It's the hottest colour, so it hurts the most. But um, green is actually one of the hardest colours to remove, like the teal colours and the greens. You can fade them, but I haven't been able to completely remove them yet. But that might change with new technology. Dr Becker has one of the first picosecond lasers in the country. It delivers a pulse in the trillionth of a second range. Trials suggest it shatters the ink more effectively. That cuts the number of treatments, particularly for difficult light blue and green inks. Traditionally green we dreaded, but nowadays green with Pico laser seems to be able to go within three or four sessions. Why that is, we don't know. The shape of the granules are different for different colours, so it may be some characteristic that makes it very susceptible to fracturing with the shorter pulse. Fortunately, allergic reactions to tattoo inks are rare. Professional tattooists say they mitigate the risk by sourcing inks from established manufacturers and warn against buying ink on the internet for backyard tattoo parties. Banned inks can also be found on the European website, Rapex. As a tattoo removalist, what advice would you give someone considering getting a tattoo? Definitely don't get a tattoo thinking you can remove it. That's like the number one thing I'd say. And if it means something to you, you most likely aren't going to get rid of it. So if you just get something random just on the spur of it or because it's cool, it's, it's not going to last. Sadly, it's become fashionable these days and it's a, not a particularly good mix tattooing and fashion because fashion has to change again and again. And to get a tattoo because it's fashionable is quite silly because you're going to be left with it when the fashion's not around. <laughs>